purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, beginning at the 39th verse of the first chapter. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnify, doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors to Abraham and his descendants forever. Here ends the reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yesterday, I turned on my television only to see repeated again and again a commercial. Ed Young, pastor of Houston Second Baptist Church, was inviting me and my family to Christmas services at his parish. Now, before I say more, I want to be clear. I believe there are many a good and decent Christian who attend Houston Second Baptist Church. And it is my prayer that many will encounter Christ at their Christmas services. However, I could not help but wonder if the Christmas message would resonate amid all the pomp and show that Pastor Young promised me. Would one see the humble manger or the cross amid the star-studded performances of Christmas under the big top? Would one hear the voice of angels through brassy chorus lines? The English theologian John Henry Newman once wrote that if the great saints of the early church were to come suddenly to life, they would find themselves more at home with the unlettered crowd before the altar than with the most learned or most esteemed of the land. They would turn from many a high aisle and solemn cloister and ask the way to some small chapel where mass was said in the populous alley or the forlorn suburb. God prefers the humble and the poor to the pompous and proud. We read in the book of the prophet Micah that God will exalt the people of Bethlehem. You, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. God chose one of the little clans of Judah to be the recipient of the greatest gift because it was small, not because Israel was great. Jesus was not born to a family of Levite priests or Herodian kings. Jesus was born to a carpenter's wife. Mary was not chosen because God thought she was educated, wealthy, or beautiful enough. God chose Mary because she was humble. And Mary sang a song to God 
the words of which we heard in our reading. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. God scatters the proud in their conceit. He confounds the Herods of the world by the least of the tribes of Judah as his family and a Galilean maid as his mother. God could have been born among us in a palace, but instead he was born to us in a stable. The Christian hope upon which we wait in these last days of Advent is not that we will become deserving of the joy that God has prepared for us. Rather, it is that God has chosen to enter our messy world, to lift up the lowly and draw the poor, the needy, the sick, and the sinful, and the suffering to himself. The good news of Christmas is for the poor and the sinful. In his message, Young refers to the good news of Jesus as, quote, our product, with the implication that Christians are consumers. But we know that consumers purchase products. They aren't just given them. However, the gift of God incarnate is simply given. We do not achieve the joy of Christmas. We cannot buy it. We cannot be good enough to merit it. Instead, we receive it, sheer gift. So if I may, on this penultimate day of Advent, invite you to turn aside from the circus and the entertainment that can all too easily distract us from the Christmas message, to turn away also from the messaging that joy is a consumer product, and instead receive, as Mary, our mother, received, the gift of God in quiet humility. In his hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem, based in part on the reading from Micah, the 19th century Episcopalian and priest Phillips Brooks writes, and I now invite you to pray with me, how silently, how silently, the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. Amen.
Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Father in heaven, by your grace, the Virgin Mother of your incarnate Son was blessed in bearing him, but still more blessed in keeping your word. Grant us who honor the exaltation of her lowliness to follow the example of her devotion to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.